The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets pretty calm to kick things off. Quite the acceleration last week, up to a high of 42.27 in the markets on Friday. Get a little bit of angst on Friday as debt limit talks. Uh, collapse a bit on Friday. Negotiators walk out. Nonetheless, today we're still sitting above that 4,200 price point in the S&Ps. As you have Biden and McCarthy going to be talking today, we'll see where that goes. We'll see if we get any headlines. All things considered, on Friday, not a, really a huge reaction. Yeah, we traded down about 20 points when negotiators walked out. Uh, but in the context of where we are in this market, sitting about 4,200, the market not too worried about that debt limit just yet. We'll see if that creeps up today as you have uh, the two men most in charge, Biden and McCarthy, actually speaking themselves as opposed to just negotiators. So we'll see if we get any headlines out of there. It's May 22nd. Yellen's talking about June 1st, and we have uh, Goldman Sachs, I think it is, out there talking about June 8th. We'll jump over to that. So it seems to be a real deal. Somewhere in the beginning of June, the Treasury's going to run out of money, and we'll see if uh, the politicians can make a deal. We will see. But we kick things off. Pretty calm territory in the markets. We got crude. Trading up 34 pennies at 72.03. Gold contract off a bit, off $6, trading at 19.75. We jumped in notes and bonds. Pretty calm action yet again. Excuse me, you're talking about a 10-year right now. Negative by one tick. You're climbing back to the lows that we saw on Friday. You're talking about a yield right now, 3.7%. Pretty much right where I kicked off the program on Friday, the yield on the 10-year. We were up to almost one 14, you're back to 113.16 right now in the 10 year. The 30 year, negative by about three ticks at 127.02. We jump over to the volatility index. Pay attention to this one, okay? 1709 from 1585 Friday morning. We are now at 1709, which is where we were at the beginning of last week, okay? That's a week ago Monday for some context there, folks. Jumping back to the S&Ps for some context. You back it up, S&Ps were about 60 to 70 points lower from where we're at. This is an elevated market, and you are seeing volatility premium come into this market above 17 when we have the S&Ps. We'll call it flat, but positive by two points. Uh, we were up above 1740, quite a spike from where we were on Friday when you consider the fact that basically, excuse me, we're flat in the market and volatility is going up. What's that saying, folks? Be careful. Okay, we got a lot of risks in this market. We got some Fed speak going on today as well, not to mention Biden and McCarthy. And what else do we have? We have Meta paying $1.3 billion. Uh, just posted in the den by S1, and I was going to get to it. You can't help but talk about it, man, because it is remarkable. And let's pull it up. Where are we? There it is. Meta fined $1.3 billion over data transfers to the U.S., and that pre puts pressure on Washington to implement surveillance changes for Europe to allow Meta to keep the data spigot open, okay? Because what's going on here is, is that they don't want them transferring all the data from Europe to the U.S. They don't think that they have the same type of, whether it's compliance, whether it's just the security measures they're using, um, but it raises pressure on the government to complete a deal that would allow Meta and thousands of multinational companies to keep sending such information tech side. It's a record privacy penalty for the European bloc. And what they do give them here, okay, now this surpasses the $746 million and $806 million deals that they had that were previous against Amazon in 2021. Um, so it's the biggest one out there, man. And what they do give them is they give them like six months or something like that in here. I was reading another article earlier this morning. And they talk about the, yeah. 
So Meta, alongside many other U.S. companies, of course, moves data from Europe to the U.S. where the company operates its main data centers. And then Europe has a problem with that because they don't get to control the data, just like if an American company was taking all our data, transferring it to somewhere else where we could never police how they were using that data. The broader European region accounts for nearly a quarter of Meta's revenue. So it would be a problem if this really became a sticking point. I don't imagine it's going to, and it looks like the market thinks it's not really going to as well. But you got to talk about it, man, $1.3 billion. The fine and suspension order are the biggest step that EU regulators have taken thus far to enforce a 2020 ruling about data transfers from the bloc's top court. That ruling restricted how companies such as Meta can send personal information about Europeans to U.S. soil because it found that Europeans have no effective legal way to challenge American government surveillance, right? They have no control over anything. So the court said, listen, you know, our citizens are having their data shipped to another country where their data cannot be controlled in any way about American government surveillance, et cetera. And yeah, so we go forward from there. And as they say, yeah, it's going to affect everybody. This one was only Facebook, but of course it's going to affect everybody. The big tech companies have some issues. They're going to have to hope that there's some type of deal with the U.S. and the EU trying to fix a whole left by that 2020 court decision. But nonetheless, $1.3 billion dollars. And you jump back to Meta, you see the sell-off there a bit, but all things considered, right? That's what Meta's done recently. 88 up to 245, you can find $1.3 billion, and they're trading at about 244. Not bad in the pre-market. What else we got? Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We got Apple shares. Oh, there's one for you. There's one indeed. Apple dropping down to 173.58. What's going on with Apple this morning? Somebody out with there? So we got, let's see, we got a downgrade to some degree. Loop capital downgrades to a hold from a buy. I mean, there is a certain essence, folks, to be careful here when you've had quite the run you've had, right? NASDAQ 100 is just a powerhouse this year. And when you put things in context, right? NASDAQ 100 starts the year at 11,000. We're sitting at 14,000. And what is that? Three. You're up 27% for the year. Is the NASDAQ 100 going to be up like 40% this year? Is it going to be up 50% this year? I don't know. But you're talking about a lot of optimism built in this market right now. When you have the NASDAQ 100 trading from 11,000 to 14,000, you have companies like Apple adding $800 billion to the market cap of their company in the span of about less than five months. Again, for some context, folks, we didn't even have a trillion dollar company until like 2000, what was it, 18, 19, 17? I'll pull it up. And meanwhile, Apple adds $800 billion in the span of four or five months. Again, adding context to all the talk of optimism, you have to realize the market is forward-looking sometimes. Even if things seem pretty rosy right now, which I agree, we've exceeded in terms of these companies, their ability to navigate, inflation, margins, profits, etc. But boy, folks, you're talking about Apple trading basically near all-time highs. We got the CPI with a core level of 5.5%. We got the Fed hiking for 10 straight times. And now what do we have? We have a live meeting in June, to say the least. We got a little bit of Fed speak today. We'll go over some of the other equities that are moving this morning. Stay tuned, folks. Monday trading. We've got markets calm so far. We'll be right back. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, 
you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps sitting flat right now at 4205, and you got to admit it's a critical area, right? You back things up. We got it on a weekly on the S&Ps, just taking a little bit of a bigger picture. Now, you're talking about a price level, folks. You back it up to January of this year on a weekly basis. You're literally sitting at almost to the tick level of that high. You back it up to where we were in December of last year. You're talking about 4180. You did get all the way up to 4327 in August. But what's most interesting about this chart is that where we bounced originally from when the Fed began hiking is right at 4,200. We make it up to 4,600. I've talked about it before. You trade down that's about 1,000 points. But critical area, whether you want to call it ice, whether you want to call it resistance, uh, we're at that price level. And we wake up this morning sitting literally right at the price of 4,205. And you back it up to the highs of early May. You're talking about 4,206. We'll put this on a daily again just to have those pop out. That was your price level when we sold off from 4,206. We were at a price level of 4,198 on April 18th. We were at a price level of 4,186 on February 14th. You got to a price level of 4,208 on February 2nd. You got to a spike high of 4,180 on December like I talked about. So as you can see, critical area, we actually get a red bar on where we were, yeah, on Friday, because we opened higher and then had a little bit of a sell-off with the angst with the debt limit going on in terms of the middle of the day. But nonetheless, as you can see, critical area for the S&Ps as we sit at 4206. All right, we're going to talk a little bit of Morgan Stanley's Wilson. How long can the market sustain until maybe those bearish risks pop up? Well, we will see. He's been talking about it for a while. This market surprised many. Not a lot of people would have called the NASDAQ 100 being up 27% this year if you said the Fed was still hiking in May. And guess what? They still actually may even hike in June. Uh, Long-term bear, they're talking about Morgan Stanley's Wilson, talking about debt limit, banks, valuations. You got Bank of America's Subramanian raises the 2023 S&P 500 price target to 4300 Here's what I'll say when you see headlines like this, okay? 4,300. There's a lot of people that would love 4,300, man. You say, hey, we're already positive for the year. Here's your S&P. What did we start the year off? 3,850. 
We're up 350 points. What are we up? 9% in the S&Ps. A lot of that having to do with like seven or eight stocks, okay? And say, yeah, that's great. We're up eight or 9%. We're sitting at 4,200. I'll take 4,300 by the end of the year. That locks in what? Double digit gains for the year. If you're only looking for 4,300 in this market by the end of the year, folks, go out and buy some CDs because you better be looking for bigger profits than 100 S&P points over the next seven months to take the risk that you're taking, in my opinion, longer term, big picture to the downside. Because the risks doesn't mean it's going to play out, folks, okay? We know how this market works. The market's never wrong. Where should the market be trading at right now? Well, the market should be trading at 4205 because that's where it's trading at, man. That's where supply equals demand this morning, okay? But you got to take a look at some of these risks, man. I mean, we're talking about core CPI at 5.5%. The next three months are going to be critical, no matter what happens in the Fed meeting coming up in basically three weeks, I think. Yeah, three weeks from Wednesday, we get a Fed decision, man. We get a lot of data in between then. We still got some earnings coming in. We got the core CPI at 5.5%. Don't forget about the banking crisis going on. Add in the debt limit in there, and then they talk about valuations. Usually, valuations is all that matters in a market, right? Outside of extenuating circumstances, but that's like last on the totem pole right now. We got so many risks going on. And he's talking about uh, latest rallies ahead fake. Bank of America's Sativa. Savita Subramanian, I got it, raises her 2023 target for 4,300, like we were talking about. Now, Wilson nailed it in 2022. He's been coming in saying that it might be bearish to start this year. So time is kind of wasting a bit. Um, but I agree a lot with what he's saying, man, okay? A strong first 100 trading days bode well for U.S. stocks. The S&P 500 index averaged annual performance is 25% after a strong start. Check that out, right? Pretty remarkable when you look at where those numbers are. Just scrolling through. Yeah, 25.2%. And history shows, man, you get those days, you extend them but this is not a normal year, folks, okay? The first 100 days of a year don't normally include the end of a 10 straight hiking cycle with generational inflation going on. Uh, that's what I'll throw out there. Yeah. We'll leave that for what it's worth, man. You can make your decision, but I see some risk there, to say the least. Now, talking about uh, stable borrowing costs. This is one of the risks, okay? Okay. Bond market titans, BlackRock, Pacific Investment, and Vanguard are warning that recent violent swings, violent in the treasuries, are only the beginning of a new era of volatility that's here to stay until central banks conquer inflation. That one is one I agree with most of all, folks, okay? And it's kind of what I've been talking about in terms of keep your stops in place when you're in this market. Don't let your losses get extended. Cut those losses short. Maybe let your profits run because we are getting some gigantic moves in either direction, man. And the volatility is going to persist. No matter which way you think this market's going, maybe we're on the way to 4,800. But if we're on the way to 4,800, man, we're going to get some sell-offs. We're going to get some accelerations in both directions no matter what happens because there is so much unknown with inflation still raging. This is something we haven't seen in 30 or 40 years, folks, okay? And – a closely watched measure of turbulence in the world's biggest bond market has already risen to levels last seen during the great financial crisis. A bevy of risks have buffeted money managers in 2023. Um, I'll get down to the nuts and bolts of this. U.S. Treasury rate volatility breaks higher from prior decade. Yeah, and you look where we are. You're talking about spikes, folks, that are not going away anytime soon. Excuse me, just battling getting over a little cold still. You got little kids in the house, man. That's how it goes. Uh, the primary catalyst remains the overarching debate around how central banks will navigate the challenging combination of weaker growth and still high price pressure, right? And that's what we're facing, as in we're seeing a weakening economy at a time when we have core CPI running at 5.5%. I have to reiterate it, right? Um, 
Yeah, so take that one for what it's worth as well. We'll leave it there. This is the Goldman article I was talking about. So Treasury Secretary Yellen, she is a part of the Biden administration. They have an interest in applying pressure on Congress to get the debt limit raised. So she is a player in these negotiations for the administration. So you take that for what it's worth. But when you hear something like Goldman say, hey, they're going to be there about June 8th or 9th. It's coming, man. Right. And absolutely remarkable that that's going to happen as we have a Fed meeting coming down the line. I mean, June 8th and 9th, folks, is the Thursday and Friday before the Fed meets 13th and 14th. It's all coming in the next three or four weeks, man. Goldman Sachs economists estimate the Treasury Department by June 8th or 9th is going to see its cash level drop below $30 billion. It signals as the bare minimum for meeting federal obligations falling due. They're probably going to be able to shuffle it for a day or two, maybe a week beyond that, and that is it. And they've been running down cash. And yeah, they got a debt limit. And my dad was talking about earlier, folks, you know, don't be confused. In fact, there's no shuffling that they can do here. The shuffling's been going on for months already. This is the end of the shuffling. The debt limit's already been breached. That's where they go. And we'll see where they go from there. And risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. you got the S&P up by two points, NASDAQ 100 up by two, Dow negative by two, and the Russell positive by five this morning. We jump over to J.P. Morgan. 
What do they have? Investor Day going on uh, today, catching a bid up by 1%. We got a couple of headlines over there as Bloomberg's got their live going on. As uh, what is it? Investor Day. What do we got going on? Investor Day, something like that. Uh, the one that caught my eye, ChatGPT. It's everywhere, man. Any public company is going to try and mention AI. And it's because it's real, folks. Okay. JP Morgan sees multiple use cases, opportunities. Everybody sees multiple use cases and opportunities with ChatGPT that's used it, folks. They see a billion dollars in value through AI investments that they have. Um, and they're talking about a lost in there, uh, a lot in there. Boost the net interest outlook to $84 billion on their first Republic deal. Their COO warns of deteriorating, deteriorating signs within the economy. Let's see. Through April, consumer banking added 600,000 net accounts. We've significantly outperformed since 2018. Let's see. They talk about their banking in there. These these are just going to keep going, man, uh, as they got a big day going on for J.P. Morgan. Nonetheless, the market likes it. They're up by about 1% to kick things off. What else we got? Let's jump around. Yeah. Speaking of regional banks, PacWest. PacW? Yeah. So they're up 8.5% as they come out with the news that they sold $2.6 billion worth of construction loans to a uh, Kennedy Wilson holding subsidiary. So the market liking the fact that they're unloading that for PacWest out there. Let's see, you got DraftKings catches a upgrade in the world of gambling. There's a pop for you, up by 3.66. Yeah, 3.3% for DraftKings as they catch a bid. UBS upgraded shares to a buy from neutral, saying the expansion into new markets should fuel growth. We've talked to our man Kevin Hanks about this. Always have some interesting interesting conversations with him. The problem with these companies is that they got like an endless ramp to growth right now. But check out the move this year alone, right? Up more than 100%. <laughs> Remarkable. We take a little bit of a longer term picture, though. Still got a long way to go, man. Let's just see some of these numbers. Is that as far back as it goes? I think it is. Yeah, that's as far back as it goes. They go public April 2020, up to 74 bucks, down to nine. They've caught a bit this year to 25. But I'd be careful. They're going to be spending money for the foreseeable future, to say the least. All right, we got to talk about Micron and the chip stock. So that's the article I had pulled up here before we kick things off. Let me try and find it. Come on. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. China chip stocks rally after Beijing said the U.S. chip giant Micron is a major security risk. Well, how do you imagine Micron's trading on that news? MU, not the end of the world. They catch a little bit, actually, off of the lows. They're down by 3.7%. We take a look at the longer picture for Micron, down from 100 bucks to 50 to start the year. You're at 65 But, yeah, you're going to see the China chip stocks rally. And you're going to see Micron trade lower as things heat up a little bit. Operators of critical information structure in China should stop purchasing Micron products. I mean, the, the game is on, folks. You got states in the U.S., right, kicking out TikTok. You have really things heating up over Taiwan, Taiwan Semiconductor. How are they trading this morning? Let's see, TS. They're basically flat to a little bit lower, but... Tension's rising. You can't deny it, man. It's happening across the board. All right. What else we have? We have a little bit of Fed speak going on, as I mentioned, just to highlight. So we had Bullard speaking at 830. I didn't see any real headlines come from him, but you got Daly speaking at 1105, and then you got Bostic and Barkin speaking at 1130 this morning. At 1130, you also got the U.S. selling $57 billion worth of 13-week and $54 billion worth of 26-week bills. I wonder how that works, right? Where is that in the debt limit? Is that is that something they're able to do with the debt limit? I don't know. There's so much going on right now. How does that work? I thought we were tapped out. How's the U.S. sell 13-week and 26-week bills if the debt limit's been risen, um, reached? If the debt limit's been reached? I don't know. We'll see. Some of the earnings today, we got Zoom coming out with their numbers. I believe it's after the bell. And Zoom, we'll jump over to the Analyze tab, you jump over the Earnings tab, and you're talking about a move, man. This is how it usually goes with Zoom. You're talking about a move after the bell today of $7.90. That's like an 11% pop for this market either way. When you're talking about a $67, $69 stock, and boy, I mean, this thing's just at the doldrums, man. From 588 to 400 in July of 2021, and you dropped from 400 to below 100 in one 
acceleration where you practically never caught a bid, man. And even since then, we're down. Yeah, this is turning into like a, a value stock. Let me see what we're dealing with on fundamentals here for the PE. Whew. Be careful, man. They still got a PE running in here at 186. That's bonkers. For a company like Zoom, valued at $20.6 billion. They ain't growing like that, folks. I don't know if that calculates. What do they have? Maybe they had a tough quarter and they had lack of earnings last quarter or something like that. But be careful on Zoom, man. It's not going away, but not the company we thought they were going to be during the pandemic. This market can't hold this market down, man. Look at that. 42.15. We spike on the open up to 10 points. You got highs of Friday of 42.27. We'll see where we go from there. Let's check out the dollar index. Dollar backing off from some of the highs of last week. We were up to 103.62. This morning, we're basically flat, down by three ticks right now at 103.16. We take a look on a daily. And as you see, a little bit of a pop on the dollar. Let's check out yields. Jump over to the 10 year. Excuse me, basically flat as well this morning. But quite a little bit of a pullback as we get the yield on the 10 year now pushing 3.7%. <clears throat> All right, what else we got going on? Let's see. We talked DraftKings. Yeah, we talked some of the banks. We talked Meta. And let's see how Apple's trading on their downgrade. Down about half a percent. I mean, not often, folks, that you see downgrades on a company like Apple. But, you know, every equity, okay, can be a sell at a certain price and can be a buy at a certain price, okay? And Apple has risen, as I said, $50 from where it was at the beginning of the year. It's got about 16 billion, billion shares outstanding. It's $15.7 billion right now, to be exact. But just call it 16 for simple math, and you're talking about $800 billion of market cap added from where we were in January. Folks, that's just about four months ago, and you better believe that things might be priced in for optimistic scenarios when you add $800 billion to a company's market cap in the span of four months. We'll see where we go from there for sure. Um, but Loop Capital, when they downgraded Apple, what they're talking about is they're talking about revenue, man. They're saying that they expect they're going to fall short of their June quarterly revenue guidance, and that's the note they put out today. So lots of warning signs in this market right now, man. We check out some other fan favorites, Tesla. Tesla catching a bid up by 1.6% today. And I thought of Tesla when I saw GM. They're going to introduce an all-electric Cadillac Escalade IQ later this year. The Cadillac Escalade 2023 Cadillac Escalade V-Series. Tesla's got some competition coming down the line, man, to say the least. Nonetheless, Tesla up by 1.6% today. Can't hold this market down. Pushing recent highs at 42.19. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. 
New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Market just keeps drifting higher. Makes sense. We we'll probably hit the highs of Friday at this point, right? We're trading at 42.21. We zoom in on the short-term action. It's a straight rocket ship from the open, man. Can't find sellers in this market, not yet at least. Highs of Friday early in the session, 42.27. That sell-off that took place when talks stalled, you're talking about a price about 42.24, so right up against that level right now. Let's see how the dollar's doing as we get action across the board. Got the dollar index sitting at 103.16 right now. You got the 10 year action sitting at 113.15. Pretty interesting. The market just accelerates high. Look at Apple, man. Can't hold it down, man. They get a downgrade that they're going to miss on revenue. You spike from 175 to a 172 handle. We just traded up a full dollar on the open. And again, that's $16 billion of market cap added, just like nothing. Let's see how some of those other FANG stocks are trading. Microsoft catches a bit on the open, up by two thirds percent. We jump over to Google shares. There's a bid for you, man. Google, up by 2.4%. What's going on with Google shares, man? They're liking Google this morning, pushing the highs of 126. This is one of the most interesting cases, folks, on Google. You trade from 90 to 126 this year. You take a look longer picture, though. We're still well off the highs of where we were towards the end of 2021. You compare that to the likes of Microsoft and Apple. Those companies much closer to their all-time highs. And Google's a case of two companies right now, and it's not a case of two companies, all right? But in my head, I've always said, if YouTube was its own standalone company, folks, I would probably buy it, man, because the growth is just nonstop on YouTube. Everybody uses it. And I imagine that ramp to growth is not going to change anytime soon. I mean, I almost associate YouTube with, like, the new version of a set-top TV box, right? You don't have to pay for it. You didn't have to use to pay for television folks right you get it on your set top you don't have to pay for it everybody uses it and it's available and it's ad supported that is how tv began okay that is what youtube now controls the problem is they're a monopoly when it comes to search they have 90 percent of search they've had it for 20 years and that is going away it's going away okay now they still might keep 60 percent. they might keep 70 percent but well, folks, if you keep 60 or 70 percent and you're used to 90 percent, the hit on revenue on Google is going to be substantial. And their AI system is going to be phenomenal, okay? They have spent an obscene amount of money on AI over the last 10 years, whatever it is. But they've had a monopoly on internet search for 20 years, and that is going away, man, okay? Okay. Um, so there's going to be – you want volatility? There's going to be some volatility on Google as well because as this goes forward, man, 
You know, nobody, who used Microsoft ever in the last 10 years? Bing. Who used Bing? I mean, people used to talk about, right, you, you, you navigate away from Bing as fast as you could. The game has changed, man. All right. Now I got chat. GPT is now downloaded on my phone. I have the app right on my phone so I can pull it up whenever we want on a mobile function. I talk to chat GPT. It spits me back exactly what I want uh, in terms of it. It spits back the output for whatever I'm asking it. And if you've tried it at all, folks, so there's ChatGPT4, okay, which I think is $20 a month right now, and I have tried it because this technology is going to change the world, folks. It's so interesting that – and there's so many times, excuse me, in society, as in we feel like it's special, I feel like it's special, that we're at a time when, number one, computers came about. Think about how that changed our life, right? When I was in high school, Noble and Greeno – in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. I was very lucky that they were at the forefront of technology, okay? The internet was just coming about, and so I was able to be exposed to some of that technology, but it was just happening for everybody right now. So I'm talking about the 90s, right? The 90s really started, you started to get cell phones throughout the 90s, people had phones in their hand, you had computers going on. When I went to Villanova in 1998 for their business school, Everybody that went to their business school got an IBM ThinkPad, okay? It's built into the tuition, of course. But that was the beginning of things really changing. So that was 1998, right? We're 25 years past that right now. So absolutely remarkable that we came about at a time when computers came about. Now we're doing it where AI is going to change the world. So it seems very fortunate, very interesting, just to say the least. Excuse me that we're at that point in society because, I mean, the world's existed for billions of years, folks. We're around at the time when humans have discovered the ability for artificial intelligence. Absolutely remarkable. But guess what? There's been so many advances, right? Whether, I mean, who was around when we discovered fire, right? Who was around when we discovered electricity? Who was around when we discovered air conditioning, okay? I mean, imagine that, right? You, you, I mean, I live in Florida. I cannot fathom. Florida wouldn't be Florida if we didn't have air conditioning, folks, okay? Point being, there's always times of radical advancement in society. We're living in one of them right now, okay? And it is going to change the world. So try it out. Try and get used to it. Try and be open to it. And try and see if you can figure out how to use it for your advantages because it is going to change the world and it's going to change it pretty quickly. And over the next five or ten years, you're going to see many jobs replaced by it now that's happened many times before folks all right you're going to see a transition to how things occur you're going to see productivity go through the roof through the roof man one person is going to be able to do the job of tens of people if not hundreds of people with the assistance of ai so it's happening man be careful um because it's going to change the way some of these equities perform and you're seeing it right with some of the uh home Tutoring services just collapsing. I mean, there are going to be companies where their sole service and their sole need in society is going to be replaced almost overnight by computers. And that's happening, man. And it's happening right now. And Google is at a vulnerable point because they have a monopoly. If they didn't have a monopoly, right, they're going to be a big player. But I don't think they're going to be able to maintain a monopoly of people going to search. So I because I have these discussions with my friends, and they're big picture discussions, right? And nobody knows what's going on. It's all opinions, okay? And one of the points they're making is, listen, it's not going to be that you search chat GPT for everything because those are longer form questions, et cetera. But boy, folks, once we get used to it, I think you're going to see it used for many things. And here's the kicker, okay? Chat GPT is not current. So I can't pull up the chat GPT app on my phone and say, hey, tell me what the weather's going to be like over the next week. I can't do that because it's not current. When that changes, watch out for a, 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 just an absolute game-changing scenario because they don't even have current data. So really, you're going for backwards data. But boy, when it becomes current and you can go to that thing, when you want to ask it anything, Google's always going to be a player and they're always going to have a service and they're going to be competing. But Google's got a competitor, and they haven't had a competitor for a long time, and that's a different scenario. 
Let's see how JP Morgan's trading. Still up by about three quarters percent. We check out some of the banks. Bank of America up by about two tenths percent right now. We jump over to some of the retailers. Walmart backing off a bit. That's a weekly. Let's check it out on a short term time frame. Yeah, down about two tenths percent right now. Jump out to excuse me, jump over to Target shares, down as well, 1.3% right now. We jump over to Amazon shares, down about two tenths percent right now. NVIDIA out with their numbers later in the week. NVIDIA. Their numbers on Wednesday, you're talking about a $20 move. We'll take a look at NVIDIA ahead of their numbers on Wednesday when we come back. Stay tuned, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got a chart and a video here going back three years. You accelerate from 346. Absolutely remarkable. When you think you get below the 2021 lows for NVIDIA, you trade down to a low of 108, and it's been a rocket ship, folks, up to 312. But, boy, you look at charts like this, man. You look at the risks in this market, and, yeah, NVIDIA, chips, talking about AI, all this stuff. They're in a prime spot, okay? But I remember... At the end of 2021, NVIDIA was one of the equities, actually, that I was looking at in particular, especially after this last acceleration from October, right? It's, it's, you can't help, folks. You see a stock that trades from 121 up to 346 over the period of intra-year, 
you better be looking at maybe it being overpriced for optimism, okay? Well, you better look at it again, man, okay? NVIDIA's in a sweet spot, but so often what happens is, yes, AI is gonna change the world, folks. It's not changing it tomorrow. Chat GPT isn't even current. I mean, I'm giving you both sides of it, right? But it's not even current. And this stock just tripled in value from where we were trading seven months ago. Ballparking, but pretty close. Okay, so be careful for that. NVIDIA's got their numbers coming out on Wednesday. As I mentioned, they're looking at, you jump over to the Analyze tab, about a $20 move for NVIDIA. You take a look just on the weekly numbers. You want action through Friday. You're talking about a $22.62 move in either direction. So if you're going directionally, that means you're looking at about $11, okay? About 11 to $12 is the price that you're paying, which is about a three to 4% move that you gotta be right directionally to make up for the premium that you're paying in this equity. Um, and yeah, maybe you come up to those highs at 346, we'll see. But folks, those highs were a little lofty. And all I'll say is those highs were at a time when we were pushing the beginning of November 2021, folks. The Fed didn't start hiking until March. The word transitory was everywhere back then. We had interest rates still near the zero bound. And now we got interest rates pushing 5%. And it's still back to that level. So be careful out there, folks. Be careful out there, as usual. Uh, listen, don't be afraid to take your stops in this market, folks. There's always going to be another trade, as my dad says. And yeah, stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's back in the saddle for the Tiger Technician's Hour. He's recharged and ready to go. Don't go away. He's coming up next. Have a great Monday.